All right, everyone. This is the next video in the SolidWorks Baby Step series. I have to admit that from the last video, I kind of fibbed, slipped up a little bit, in that we're not going to be creating a rocket nozzle injector yet. There's still one thing I want to go over, and that is equation-driven curves. These are important in any CAD tool, and these are an important concept for your master, because let's face it, you're eventually... I mean, if you do build a career in CAD, or in some field using CAD, you are going to run into situations where standard shapes, arcs, contours, don't fit the profile you're looking for. Where you do have to rely on external functions creating a, a contour for you. That is where equation-driven curves come in. These are functions that are used in anything from nose cones of rockets to bell nozzles of rockets. I know I probably have you thinking they're only used for rockets, but in all honesty, they're used in a, in a lot of shapes and a lot of designs where a smooth curve is needed that does not fit a spherical profile. And that's where high-end tools like SolidWorks, NX, Cadia come in is that they're well known for the proficiency in modeling these features. Now, a word to the to wise, SolidWorks equation-driven curve ability is very good. However, the way you enter the equation, the actual particular syntax you need to use to to enter the equation is quite frankly on the level of intelligence of a brain dead chimpanzee. I mean, at the very best, equation entering in SolidWorks is a nightmare, and at the very worst, it's a cruel bitch. Uh, and here's why I'll give you some context for that. Essentially, what we're going to be creating is we're going to be creating a rocket nose cone. It's an old shape that I created a while ago. I figured I'd just revisit it because it was a good demonstration of these techniques. Um, I'm probably butchering these two pronunciations right here. But what we're going to be creating is a standard hack series nose cone. Um, essentially, it's a parabolic-esque curve. It doesn't really have anything to do with a parabola, as you can see, but the shape makes sense to describe as a parabola to a lot of people who aren't, you know, qualified in the derivation of this kind of math, um, which is most of us. What we're going to be doing is we're going to be deriving the specific least drag nose cone shape which is, again, I'm probably butchering this, called a Von Karman nose cone shape. Now, equation entering in SolidWorks was so difficult that I had to revert to basically copying the equation from an old model that I made. And here is what that model looks like. I scaled up the font and notepad so you could see it. Pretty ugly. And if any of these parentheses are off, if there's anything even slightly messy about your equation, SolidWorks won't take it. And I've read online a number of possible theories or explanations as to why this is, one of which which makes the most sense is that SolidWorks equation-driven front end, the actual user interface end that you interact with that commands the CAD kernel to produce the curve, the output, accepts this form in some sort of visual basic scripting format. And this makes sense if you're used to programming functions. I mean, this kind of standard in and out parentheses format makes sense to you. But SolidWorks is very unforgiving as far as the format. A programming IDE will tell you where you messed up an equation. SolidWorks will not. 
And again, I probably fought 10 or 15 different ways with a pre with a, a new iteration of this formula before I just decided to go back to square one. So again, I'm not gonna waste any, any more time dealing with this. Let's just get to it. So again, new part. And we're going, going to be sketching on the top plane again as usual. Now the equation driven curve is a form of a spline so you'll find it under the spline tools. You'll see it right here. It says equation driven curve. Uh, hello. And it even has a little sigma on it. Now here's where you enter the, the equation. Now you can see from the actual image that R is the radius of the butt end of the nose cone, whereas L is the length. And it won't, doesn't take you too much figuring out of this equation to figure out what is what. The radius is 2 and the length is 10. Now, because we're using IPS units, that means it has a radius of 2 inches and a length of 10. So we enter that. And what, what we're going to do is we're going to iterate this example from 0 to 10, and there we go. Now what we're going to do is we're going to revolve, extrude this piece, where we revolve it around an axis, but first we must have an axis to revolve it around. Now what I did the last video, before I got interrupted by the phone, we we'll just did some brief in-tour contouring. Now this is purely aesthetic. It's not going to add or subtract anything from our model. But it'll just give us something more to look at when the model actually constructs. And it's a little bit of an ex extra feature for the rotational extruding. So this is the shape we have so far. Once again, exit sketch. And later on, you'll see when I start doing the NX tutorials, is that the one important thing to note is that the sketch is the basic unit of 3D CAD. Okay, it is the lowest common denominator. If you want to do anything in 3D CAD, any operation will hinge on some sort of pattern or design or contour or path that you created within a sketch. So we're going to go revolve and we're going to revolve it around this axis of rotation. We're going to click OK. And that's the shape. Now we can get a better look at it by going to the front and you can see how it's not a parabola. A parabola does not have a sharp tip. A parabola rounds off of the tip. Now what we're going to do is we're going to go even a little bit further than this. We're going to sketch on this face. And at this point, I've already demonstrated the core concepts of this video. At this point, I'm just kind of drilling you with circular patterns. <laughs> because it's important. You, know, you need to know that. Well, if you want to be good. Sorry. Exit sketch. Now what we're going to do is we're going to extrude that in. Let's go get back to the isometric view. We're, go we're going to box that in about half an inch. We're then going to take that circular pattern. Now with circular patterns, oftentimes you do have to view axes that don't exist. You can you can often view these by going view temporary axes. So select this axis and pattern it about eight times. That sounds about good. And then we'll select that face and we'll just put a tenth of an inch filter chamfer on it. And that's it. So I hope this helps you get some experience with equation-driven curves. I mean, obviously, most of the time I was kind of ranting about SolidWorks and its particular handling of them. But 
that is also something that's important to note is that each CAD program has particular peculiarities about it that either make it, you know, the most beautiful CAD program you've ever worked in or an absolute fucking nightmare. And, and that's why there is no clean answer as far as which one should I use. It's all based on personal preference. Um, I'm not even going to say it again. You know where the files are if you want them. You know where the files are if you want to steal them. Next video we're actually going to start will be Rocket Nozzle and whatnot. It'll be Rocket Nozzle Injector. Alright, stay tuned, folks.